viewers and subscribers and welcome to Paul Who. Yes, welcome to the channel to celebrate all of Doctor Who and everything to do with Doctor Who. And of course, my name is Paul and the channel is... I want to name my channel something amazing. So I took Paul from my name and Who from Doctor Who to make Paul Who with a nice... This t-shirt was actually made by my best mate, Jamie Arrowsmith, for my birthday. So I'm actually glad I got a picture frame for it to slide it in instead of wearing it and ruining it. I don't want to ruin it. I love it. I absolutely love it. And it deserves to go in a picture frame. So for today's video, I'm going to be ranking basically the show's anniversary specials. So we have the 10th anniversary, the 20th anniversary, the 50th anniversary, and of course the 60th anniversary. Two anniversaries did not make it into this because nothing technically really happened to, sh to the show to celebrate the anniversaries. And that is, of course, the show's 30th anniversary and, of course, the show's 40th anniversary. Now, you're probably wondering what we did get the 40th anniversary. We had Scream with the Shulka. Yes, but I don't really class that as basically an anniversary. I just think they kind of got it out to because it was the show's 40th anniversary back in 2003. I really think that's why they got it out. But... To be honest with you, I don't class it as an animist, as an anniversary special. I just think they just threw it out for the sake of it, you know. And of course, for the show's 30th anniversary, we should have had the fantastic story that would have been called The Dark Dimension. With a universe unthreatening because of the fourth Doctor not regenerating into his fifth incarnation. And it would have seen John Pertwee make a return, Colin Baker, Sylvester McCoy, and Sylvester McCoy with Peter Davison. But no, that never really happened, and I don't know why, because I've been reading into it. I found the old script, believe it or not, for The Dark Dimension, and the script that was literally written for it sounds actually quite interesting from what I found on the website. So if you haven't basically seen it, do I do suggest go on to Google and type in Doctor Who, the 30th, the 30th anniversary of The Dark Dimension script, and it should pop up. It did pop up when I, when I read it a couple of week, weeks ago. So, ranking the anniversary specials that we do have, which is basically the show's 10th, 20th, 50th and 60th anniversaries. Which one is my personal favourite? So, I'm going to be doing this through chronological because the show had three 60th anniversary specials. that had one 50th, one 20th and, of course, a four-part story for the show's 10th anniversary. So, let's dive into how I rank, basically, the anniversary specials. And in sixth place, we have the... 31st start of the 60th anniversary, aka the Star Beast. Now, the Star Beast is a good episode, it really is a good episode, and you can tell it is part of the 60th anniversary. But it doesn't feel much like an anniversary, it feels more like a puzzle that kind of sets up the anniversary. I mean, the only thing that's good about it, we have Beat the Meep and the Wrath Warriors that made their Doctor Who debut in actually the Star Beast in the comic, starring the fourth Doctor. So it's actually quite nice for them to try and adapt it with a new Doctor instead of the, the fourth Doctor. And of course, the whole thing with Donna and Rose, with the whole concept of the Doctor Donna thing and passing through and they just decide to let it go, does kind of let down the story. But I do like the build up because I like the whole thing with the 14th Doctor where he's there talking to Shelley and he goes, hmm, and. Well, that's it. First of all, a bow tie. Then I was a Scotsman. Then I was a woman. And now I'm back to this face. You got your old face again. Why? I don't know. I really like how the Doctor is puzzled to why he's got his 10th Doctor's face back. And really, I like the 14th Doctor's outfit. I love the 14th Doctor's sonic screwdriver, especially when he creates the shield against the Wrath Warriors and the unit soldier took over by Beat the Meep's mind power. Sort of staffing. And I like the way how the Doctor literally lifts up the sonic like that. And he goes, not today, thank you. And of course, I do like the bits with Donna's family, but again, it just feels more like a connection to Series 4 than it does to the start of the anniversary specials. So I do have to put that in sixth place. In fifth place, we have the Day of the Doctor. Now, Day of the Doctor is actually quite good. It is actually quite good, but I've got a few issues with it. It doesn't feel much like a proper Doctor Who celebration than some people say it is. It feels much... Like an anniversary to the show 10th anniversary instead of the, sh the whole anniversary of the 50 years of Doctor Who. Yeah, okay, we had the return of Tom Baker. We had the return of the Zygons and the Daleks. It just, again, and plus we have two of the most modern Doctors in modern Who, basically with the 11th and 12th, 10th Doctors. But it doesn't feel much like an actual anniversary to all of Doctor Who. Yes, all Doctors have a little cameo appearance, basically, through clips of the show. Is they're having the, actor, the actual proper actors coming back into the show in their own Doctor outfits. And basically, act like the Doctor with the current Doctor. 
apart from Tennant. And it does give us John Hurt. John Hurt is actually quite good. But the biggest complaint for me for the 50th, it doesn't feel much like an anniversary special. Same as the Star Beast. The Star Beast doesn't feel much like an anniversary special. It just feels more like a setup to the anniversary specials, but it doesn't feel much like the show's 60th anniversary specials. There's not really much callbacks and stuff in the 50th. I mean, yeah, okay, we've got the Zygons. We have the whole bit of Unit Lab with all the old companions. But it would have been better if we had, like, the return of, like, Paul McGann's Doctor. Yeah, okay, we had Night of the Doctor for that, but I would have loved to have Paul McGann's Doctor in Day of the Doctor and, of course, Sylvester McCoy's Doctor and Colin Baker's Doctor and Paul and Peter Davis's Doctor, as well as Tom Baker. So having Tom Baker coming back to play the creator, having to come back in his fourth Doctor outfit, because you can say, because they've all been separated from the time streams, the reason they look older is because they're out of sync in the time streams, which means they've kind of referred to the way they look now in nowadays instead of, you know, that I think that could have happened. So, yeah, in literally in fifth place, we have the fantastic 50th anniversary. Again, I still enjoy the 50th anniversary, but it doesn't feel much like an anniversary special. In fourth place. So in fourth place, we have World Blue Yonder for, again, from the 60th. Now, World Blue Yonder, again, it doesn't feel the pattern of the 60th anniversary. It just kind of have stuff going on with the whole mention of the Flux and the Timeless Children going on from basically the 13th Doctor's era. So it feels more like a continuation of the 13th Doctor's era. And of course, the Doctor using the salt in the edge of the universe breaks down and allows creatures like the Toy Maker, Maestro, to come into our universe and Mad Jack. But it doesn't really much happen. I mean, apart from messing up the continuity of the fourth Doctor bumping into Isaac Newton and dropping an apple on his head, which the fourth Doctor does say he did in the Stones in the Pirate Planet, which I have got read the book to, and he does say it in the Target book. He actually does say it. The fourth Doctor does say it. So the fact the fourteenth Doctor basically crash lands the ties into an apple tray with Donna because of Donna spilling coffee in the ties console. It doesn't feel much like an anniversary. It just feels more like the continuation from Star Beast. But it kind of ruins what the Fourth Doctor said. It ruins that kind of connection to what the Fourth Doctor said about Sir Isaac Newton. Today. It was him who actually met, originally met them. And of course, and all that. So yeah, I had to put... But I do like the kind of strange beast that literally take places and go, my arms are too long. Then it's the jaw. Then it's the jaw. Is it three legs or two legs? It's two legs. Oh, I've got, I got an extra leg. You know, it's like that. It does have some great moments in it, which is why it is my second favourite out of the 60 anniversary specials. But I'm sorry to say that it's basically in sixth place, in fifth, fourth place. So, into the top three specials of Doctor Who. So, of course, we've got one 60th anniversary, we've got the 20th anniversary, and of course, we've got the 10th anniversary. Now, in third place, I have to put The Giggle. Now, The Giggle is honestly the best anniversary special for Doctor Who, I can honestly think, because why? We have the return of a villain that has not been seen since 1960s, in, since 1960s against the first Doctor. Plus, it feels more of an anniversary story than instead of, basically, the connection. It does continue on, but it is my favourite one. The Toymaker is absolutely brilliant. I love how he mentions, like, Amy... Clara and Bill. Well, that's all right then. I love the horror elements of Stalky Bill, Sue, Stalky Sue, and the Stalky Babies, Babas, the Stalky Babas. But I really do enjoy this toy maker's performance. Neil Patrick Harris is brilliant, and of course, I do like other elements that we have in here because we do have quite a few other little callbacks and stuff to. Basically, with Unit, we got the return of Mel, which is basically that connection to classic Doctor Who, which is something the Star Beast kind of missed. If we would have had Mel in the Star Beast, I think, you know what, we've got a classic companion. It does kind of feel that it's a whole celebration for Doctor Who. So in a whole, in a whole the 60th anniversary is really, really good. I do enjoy the 60th anniversary over the 50th anniversary, but... I love, basically, to rank all of the episodes separately, like the Star Beast... Day of the Doctor is in fifth place. Then, of course, we have Wobbly Yonder in fourth place. In third place, it is the Giggle, and I'm sorry to say that, but I just absolutely do enjoy the Giggle a lot more than some people do. Some people say Wobbly Yonder is the best of the anniversary specials, but to me, I absolutely have to say, I think that goes hand down to the fantastic story known as the Giggle, because I just love the toy maker and the whole concept of the bi-generation. It really does confuse people on the matter, but... 
just enjoy for Doctor Who for what it is. Just be glad our favourite TV show is still continuing with the 15th Doctor. I'm absolutely so over the moon with the giggle. I absolutely love it. And of course, having the 14th Doctor to retire and basically go and be happy with Donna and her family really gives you that, that, that really great connection to Series 4. But it's something that the Starbies kind of missed. But I absolutely love it. I really do love it. In second place, we have an ultimate favourite of mine from the 5th Doctor era. So in second place, I've had to put the five doctors the five doctors it is a great anniversary special it really shows what an anniversary special should be like i mean apart from not having the fourth doctor in it but i think tom Baker should have come back anyway it doesn't matter if you're having problems with john nathan turner and that's why you left after two years i think you should have come back for the 60th uh, for the 50th uh, sorry for the 20th tom i really think you should have come back the fact that in this in this story we have so much more connections to the show's past 20 years instead of basically what we get for the show 60th and 50th because there's not really much connections to the past apart from like in the 50th we have the return of the Saigons and the creator aka Tom Baker in the 60th we have the return of Mel we've got the return of the toy maker we have beat the meat for that's the crossover from the comics so yeah it does feel more the 60th anniversary does feel more like an anniversary than this 50th did but it doesn't feel much like an anniversary than the Five Doctors did. Now, the Five Doctors, we have cameos from a lot of Doctors villains. We have the Master, who basically made his debut in 1971. We've got a Dalek. We've got Cyberman. We have an Ashton Robot. We have the Return of the Yeti. Boom, I really love that Yeti. I really love the fact we have the Return of the Yeti. As well as having, basically, the First, Second and Third Doctors make an appearance in this story. And basically have... The, fir the, re the very first recast of the first Doctor played by Richard Herndl because William Hartnell passed away back in 1975. So Richard Herndl did a fantastic performance as the first Doctor. As it happens, I am the Doctor. The original, you might say. And i got to be honest with you, The Five Doctors was actually my first introduction to Patrick Troughton and, of course, to William Hartnell's Doctors back when I was three years old. Because I literally watched it with John Pertwee's last three stories when it was being repeated on BBC, on, uh, not BBC, on uh, UK Gold at the time. And then, of course, I watched all the Tom Baker and then I watched Pete Davidson. But my dad had the five Doctors on DVD and VHS. So I kind of remember watching, as I was watching the fourth Doctor era, I was watching this story growing up as well with my dad. And me and my dad used to watch the five Doctors a hell of a lot because it was one of our favourite stories as a child because I used to love the five Doctors. The 20th, well, the 1995 special edition that came out on VHS and then later on in DVD in 1999. I actually really have great memories of watching that. I never really thought I had a problem with the Mr. Whippy effect until the 2023 version came out. And I love the 2023 version over the 1995 version and, of course, the original version, that the, the 40th anniversary one. But I absolutely quite enjoy the, the Five Doctors. It is just a fantastic Doctor story. I love the return of... Basically, Susan, the Brigadier. I love the return of Sarah Jane for the third Doctor. And of course, we do have the little cameo appearances of Mike Yates, Liz Shaw, Jamie and Zoe from the Troughton era, as well as the Time Lords. I love the return of the Master in this one. And in fact, I just love the return of Bruce Lord. The Bruce Lord is basically a Time Lord that I thought we would never see again, considering that last time we saw him was in Ark of Infinity. And of course, he was literally the president. So the fact that literally after leaving that story and come back to it like in the same year, but a bit later on, the fact Bruce has changed once again into a new actor. He wants to carry on his old jobs, which is one of the reasons I do like Bruce. I think he's more of a good friend to the Doctor than he is, should be a villain. I really think the villain should have been somebody else. I really think the villain should have been like the master, really, not the master doing Bruce's bidding. I really think the master should have been like, oh, I'm going to play the game of wrestling. I want immortality. I want my life's back. And not Barusla. That's how I think of it. And then, of course, in number one, we have my all-time favourite multi-doctor story. Uh, and it's become my favourite since I late, literally watched it back in January. Because I used to love this one. But it has got to go to the three doctors. The three doctors, man. What can I say about it? I absolutely love the three doctors. I really love how Patrick Trout and the John Pert, we really do bicker. I love the fact how Wim Hartnell comes in. Ah, so you're my replacement, eh? Hey? A dandy and a clown. Yes, well, well, get on with it. What are you, what, what are you doing? What's, it, what's going on? Uh, just as a thought. Nothing. Well, it's not easy that we know what our stuff is. It's antimatter. Oh, I see. And what is a bridge for? Hmm? Crossing. Well, I've stopped diddle-dialing. And cross it. No, no, wait. Wait, wait, wait. And then, of course, I love the fact that the two doctors literally look at each other and goes, Who was that? Me. Me. 
I really love the way how then Patrick Tracker and John Pert really do bicker. And he goes, Doctor, why are you listening to him? Because I have some strange great authority for him. Because he is the first Doctor. And the second Doctor really did look up to the first Doctor. You do see that with this pre Instead of looking up to his next predecessor. He literally looks up to the first Doctor more than he looks up to the third Doctor. Which is something I found really, really brilliant for Patrick Troughton. I always admired my, his own wisdom. I really have. I absolutely love Patrick Troughton in this story. Now, Doctor, if you turn off the force with that thing in there, we'll get inside the TARDIS. Precisely. Boom. I absolutely love the three Doctors. I love the setup with literally the antimatter creature coming out and sapping Mr. Olives into the antimatter universe. And then, of course, Dr. Tyler picks it up. And then, of course, it goes after the third Doctor because it literally activates in the third Doctor's lab again and basically saps Dr. Tyler and saps all around basically the material in the lab apart from the TARDIS. And of course, the Doctor is there driving Bessie. And as he's there driving Bessie, it comes out of the drains. Do as I say. And it literally ignored Joe until she, it looks at the Doctor. And it literally sapped Bessie. Poor old Bessie. And then, of course, I love the very first appearance of the Jow Gods. Where they're literally looking around in the woodland. She's got nothing going on. And then all of a sudden, you've got that fantastic sib sound. That, that sound that did that. Zoop. 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 Oh, my God. What's that? <laughs> I really love Unit where they literally fire a bazooka into one of them and it doesn't even damage it. It doesn't even kill it. It just carries on walking. And you has just got that kind of sound. Now, the villain in the story is, of course, Omega, who basically wants revenge of the Time Lords because of them trapping him inside an anti universe. Considering that, basically, Omega was the one that created the whole time travel. He thought the Time Lords thought he died, but he ended up being trapping an anti universe. But instead of having the Time Lords to go look for him, it becomes ranged and pull on anger and he wants revenge on the time lords he wants revenge on everything in the universe he wants to rule gallifrey and of course he is stopped by the three doctors not mainly the first doctor because he is stuck and in, stuck inside his own little gravity bubble or should i say now magnetic bubble don't know uh he is still trapped in it i honestly love it i really do love the three doctors it is a classic story and it is definitely the best anniversary special so how do you rank all six of the anniversary specials? How do you rank the three Doctors, the five Doctors, Day of the Doctor, and of course, Star Beast, Wobbly Yonder, and the Giga, which is your favourite? Let me know in the comments. Please do like, subscribe, and share, and join me for more awesome Doctor Who content. Have a cracking day, you amazing viewers and subscribers. And just to be warned, the Toymaker will be lurking somewhere out there.